Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Since 2002, the World Health Organization ranked glaucoma the second leading cause of blindness globally after cataracts. Glaucoma is a group of eye diseases which cause damage to the optic nerve and result in vision loss. The Glaucoma Research Foundation records that about 60 million people worldwide have glaucoma, while the WHO estimates that it caused the blindness of 5.2 million people globally. This corresponds to about 15% of the total burden of world blindness. My guest on the show today is a post-fellowship senior registrar at the Department of Ophthalmology in the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idi Araba. She is Dr. Oninye Onyekwedi. You're welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on this program. Now, they described it as a group of diseases. Oh, yeah. What are the members of this group? Okay, well, so glaucoma is a large spectrum of diseases and broadly it's classified into the open angle and closed angle glaucoma and this is actually based on the configuration of the angle of the anterior chamber of the eye. Now under each of them it can actually be primary or secondary glaucoma. So primary glaucoma refers to those whom um, the cause is really not known. We just have a group of risk factors that have been identified while the secondary glaucomas are due to either eye diseases or some systemic diseases that lead to raised intraocular pressure. And then this is, um, I also want to talk about, um, to also mention there are a group of glaucomas that also occur in children as well. And so it can be congenital or acquired in them. So under the congenital, it can be a primary congenital glaucoma in children, or it can be a secondary congenital, that means it's due to a secondary disease that they acquired congenitally, they were born with. But it can also occur in children from acquired diseases, which can be from the eye or systemic diseases as well. So from the body. Exactly. So it can come, it's a whole, it's a whole spectrum, spectrum of really. Diseases, yeah. Does this condition have any symptoms? Well, so the commonest type of glaucoma is the primary open angle glaucoma, and then the primary open angle glaucoma usually has no symptoms in the early stage. That's why it's called the sneak thief of sight, because it tends to just creep up on the person. By the time the person starts manifesting symptoms, the disease is actually advanced. So yes, there are symptoms. The open angle glaucoma in the advanced stages, the patient could start complaining of blurry vision, could start bumping into objects because of um, loss of the peripheral field of vision. But the angle closure type, that tends to be more symptomatic, especially when it occurs acutely. So they could have um, sudden painful loss of vision, redness of the eyes, sensitivity to light. They see rainbows around lights and all that. And then in the children, in congenital glaucoma as well, it also has symptoms. So these children may be born or noticed within the first um, few years of life that their eyes start getting larger, start having this bluish hue, they start being very sensitive to light, have poor vision. The clear part of the eye, which is the cornea, actually starts becoming cloudy because of the buildup of pressure. So yes, glaucoma has symptoms, but then in the primary, um, primary types of glaucoma, by the time the patient is symptomatic, the disease is advanced. But why, okay, when it's primary, you said the, the disease is advanced when the patient has symptoms. Mm -hmm. Why is it so? I mean, if there's pressure, there should be pain. So um, when it's, that's, that's why I said in the acute stage, so primary can be actually an angle closure. Primary can be acute or chronic angle closure. But in the open angle, this pressure builds up gradually. And let's know that it's not everybody that has an open angle glaucoma that their pressure is high. Before, it used to be thought that glaucoma, once, my once I have glaucoma, it means my pressure is high. There was this concept of what the normal pressure actually should be. But now um, that, that, that concept is being downplayed because we now know that people can have pr um, open angle glaucoma even when the pressure in the eye is normal or is statistically normal. So we talk about the pressure in that eye with respect to that individual. And and so because this buildup in pressure occurs gradually, the body tends to adjust to it, but it's causing damage to the optic nerve head, causing loss of the retinal nerve fiber layer, and then the ganglion cells are being lost. And so it starts affecting the peripheral vision. And it starts affecting, the patient may not notice until it creeps up to the central vision. So they will usually not have pain and all that, unless the pressure builds up suddenly, and that's when they will have pain. Yeah. All right, so why is it then that, you know, the, the eye, the, the um, I lost that train of thought, but oh, okay. why, let me ask about the risk factors now. Okay. 
who who gets glaucoma okay so let's go back knowing that glaucoma there are different types of glaucoma but i think i'll talk more primary open apart from glaucoma. babies yeah and then why should some babies have it and then some not have it okay so which do i answer first so why some babies have it and some don't have it um so the primary congenital glaucoma is actually a genetic um, issue. It's a, it's a problem as the baby is developing, but it's genetic. It's actually, well, let me not go into that, but it's something that can be inherited. One out of every 10,000 babies that is born actually comes down with it. So it's an anomaly at the angle of the anterior chamber. So that angle of the anterior chamber doesn't develop properly in these babies, preventing the aqueous humor, which is the fluid that is produced within the eye, from draining out. And then this aqueous humor builds up, and then the pressure goes up, and then it starts causing damage in their eyes. We we have a model here. Okay. Can you show us this angle that we are talking about? What's this angle? Okay, so this is a model of the eye. So this clear part is the cornea. But when we look at each other, you really don't see the clear part. What that's you see it. is the iris behind, that's you know, so that's the brown brownish portion. part. So the space between the cornea and the iris is what we call the anterior chamber. Now, at the edges, like 360 degrees, okay, the, where they meet, that's the angle of the eye. Okay. So that's the angle of the anterior chamber. And within that, um, like, it's, the, the fluid that is produced goes through there, and then through that angle, it drains out through a pipe, what we call the Sclem's Canal. Now, the body of this pipe, the wall of this pipe, is like a sieve-like structure, which we call the trabecular meshwork. So the, it flows through the trabecular meshwork into the Sclem's Canal and then gets into the veins and is absorbed into the blood. So in people that have open-angle glaucoma, the angle is open the way it should be,